Most online mortgage calculators are designed for new mortgages. They're inflexible, they're splattered with ads trying to sell you a new loan, and they don't accomplish what many of us need, which is to get smarter about the current loan we already have, whether you wanna pay it off early or stretch it out until the final payment. I've been using the same mortgage calculator for the last 20 years. It can calculate a new mortgage, but you can also customize it to understand your current mortgage today and into the future. In this video, I'll show you how it works, how to set payoff goals, and if you like what you see, you can download it for free. We'll start at the top left here, and as we input data, you'll see the table below and the chart will update on the fly. Let's say the cost of the house that we purchased is $400,000, and we put 5% down, and that's $20,000. So our original mortgage balance is $380,000. Now this first payment date defaults to today's date, but when you get the spreadsheet, now I'm recording this on Independence Day 2024, uh, but what you wanna put here is the date where you made your first payment on the mortgage. So for example, I'm gonna use, let's say April 1st, 2022. And back then interest rates were a little lower, so this person got a 4% mortgage rate. Years, that's the, the term on the mortgage, so this is gonna be a 30 year mortgage. You can make it whatever you want, 15, 10, 20. And then we calculate the mortgage payment using the PMT function up here. And that gives us our mortgage payment, which then feeds the table below. You can see below the table grays out for the payments that have already been made. So if you made your first payment on April 1st, 2022, and today is July, 2024, it's gonna gray out all those payments that you've made so far. I also have this age column here. That's gonna be helpful for when we wanna set a goal to pay off the mortgage at a certain age. Let's say you wanna retire at 62. You can set a goal to pay off the mortgage by 62 or 60, and it'll tell you how much you need to pay extra on the loan. I also have monthly tax and insurance. These are escrow items that don't affect the mortgage at all. I put them here so we can get a total payment amount. So your total payment is the mortgage payment plus the escrow and then any extra payments. Now right now I don't have any extra payments in here, but when I put in $100, you can see it's gonna update the table below. Now this is extra payments going forward. That's because in the gray area we've already made these payments. Over on the right here you can see that when you add that extra payment it's going to reduce the total number of payments that you need to make. So if we go back to the zero payment you see with no extra payments you're going to have 360 payments over 30 years the total interest and the total cost of the home and the extra payments we don't have any right now but when I add that hundred dollars back in it's going to reduce our payments to 330 which will take us 27 and a half years and it's going to reduce the total interest we pay on the loan saving us twenty four thousand dollars. So if you put this information in correctly Correctly, you should be able to get your end balance to match exactly what it is on your statement. If you're not getting that exact amount, you can play around with the start date a little bit. Some of us have also made extra payments. So let's say early on in this loan, you made a $300 payment here and maybe another $300 payment. Then you decide, well, I'm not going to make any more payments. Well, those $300 payments reduce the balance and therefore reducing the amount of interest you pay on the balance. So it's going to change the table all the way down. Looking behind the scenes here, uh, I showed you the mortgage payment and how we calculate that through the, the payment formula. So beginning balance we take from the original mortgage balance here, the payment we take from the mortgage payment, the extra payment field we're taking from up here. I'm using different logic in some of these fields to clean up the columns when you uh, modify your extra payments. So you can dig into that a little bit if you want. It's, it's sort of complicated, but it, you can figure it out if you work through the formulas. The interest field is the beginning balance multiplied by the interest rate divided by 12. The way a mortgage works is the payment is steady, but the interest payment gets reduced every month, and that means more money is going toward the principal. So the principal field is simply the payment minus the interest plus anything extra going to the principal. The end balance is the beginning balance minus the principal, and then we take the end balance and we put it over here at the beginning balance and we do it all again. Now you'll see some different logic in here, this end of month formula. I'm using that to make the date dynamic and the age field, I'm using this round down formula. I probably found that on the internet, but it helps us calculate the age based on whatever birthday you put on here. This is helpful down the line when we wanna set a goal to pay off the mortgage by a certain age. I know my mortgage is gonna be paid off sometime in my late 60s and at some point I think I'm gonna to wanna to get rid of it. So it's nice to have the spreadsheet to tell me you know, what I need 
need to pay early to get it down to zero. Online mortgage calculators are really only good for, for new mortgages. I do have a, a new mortgage calculator down here if you wanna use that. But the next thing I'm gonna show you is how to use the goal seek function in Excel to determine what you need to pay extra on a mortgage to pay it off to zero by a certain date. So in this example, a person who took out this mortgage in April 2022 was 44 at the time. They're now 47. And let's say they wanna pay the mortgage off by the time they turn age 60. So scroll down to the payment date where the person turns age 60 and highlight the end balance on that date. Go up to your ribbon and go to data and what if analysis and drop down to goal seek. This is the goal seek function. What we want is for the end balance to be zero by the time we turn 60 years old. Highlight that end balance field. You wanna set that value to zero and by changing cell, place your cursor in there and then go up to this extra field. Now what it's gonna do is go through uh, various iterations of values to come up with the value that will uh, get you to zero. We're gonna let it run and here we have our value. So based on this current mortgage, this person would need to pay $1,176 per month to get the value to zero by the time they turn 60. So maybe you get to that point, you're like, okay, that's not, that's not gonna work. I can't afford $1,000 right now. So you go back to zero and you can run it again. Let's say, okay, maybe we're gonna go for age 63 instead. To highlight that end balance field, go to data, what if analysis and goal seek. We're gonna set that value to zero by changing the cell extra again. Let it run again and see what it comes up with. This time it's about $750. Maybe that's more doable. Point here is that once you get this set to your current loan, you can play with it different ways. You can add extra payments, you can ride it out. You can use Goal Seek to set goals to reach your desired payoff date. Or if you can only afford so much extra per month, you can add that on the fly like we've done here and then run the analysis again. Let's say one year you get a big raise and you can add a little bit more toward the mortgage. Then you can bump up that extra payment and see where that end date lands. You notice here when we bump up that extra payment amount to 750, the savings comes down quite a bit. Now, if you have a, a low interest mortgage, like say under 3% or under 4% that you got during that low interest rate period, it may not make sense to pay off the loan if you plan to stay in the house for a long time. But if you bought a house at a higher interest rate, say five, six, 7%, which were more common in 2023, 2024, extra payments may make more sense for you depending on your financial situation. So I'm not gonna get into the debate whether or not you should pay off your loan or not. That's a very personal decision. I know that I have a 2.75% mortgage and I'm staying in my house, so I am not paying any extra payments to my mortgage. But in the future, you know, when I'm in my late 50s or approaching my final retirement date, I may think about paying off the mortgage either incrementally or with a lump sum at the very end, depending on where we are with our finances. We also might move someday. So when we sell the house, we'll pay off the mortgage and we may get a new mortgage that is probably gonna be a higher rate than 2.75. That's just something we have to weigh when we get to that point. If you're having trouble matching your end balance to your statement, double check the date that you're using. Remember, it's not the closing date, but it's the date of the first payment. So if you close your loan in September of that year, your first payment might not be until November 1st. Also, if you've made extra payments, make sure you put those in manually in the right month and the right amount, and the calculator will update automatically. If you wanna try the spreadsheet, the first link in the description is a free download. Click that link, it'll redirect you to an Excel download. You can upload that to Google Sheets if you don't have Excel, and it should convert to a Google Sheet. The spreadsheet is 100% free, but if you like it, please give me a thumbs up on this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you have any questions or improvements that you think could make the spreadsheet better, go ahead and put those comments uh, down below. I'm Craig from retirebeforedad.com. I write about personal finance and DIY investing for financial independence. Go to my website and subscribe to my newsletter. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.